and thank you for joining me for this webinar on sharing the gospel message with kids. It's such a joy to be with you. Um, kids ministry leaders are my favorite people on the planet, probably a little biased because I am one, but I'm just so thankful for the work that you're doing and just making a difference in the lives of children for the sake of God's kingdom. So thank you. Um, and so um, I want to start by asking you a question, and that is, when did you come to a saving faith in Jesus? I know that when I ask that question to groups of um, adults, um, adult believers, typically I find that most of them came to know the Lord as children. Um, so I think that that's both um, sobering and encouraging for us as kids ministry leaders. It's encouraging because we know that the work that we're doing is vitally important. Um, but we also know that it's um, very, it's um, very, very important. <laughs> um, we know that the impact that we can have on the life of a child now is going to last, could last the rest of their lives and on into eternity. It's literally the difference between life and death. And so I just want to thank you that, um, you know, you care enough to, watch a webinar to learn how to do that more effectively um, for the sake of the kingdom. Um, so thank you for what you're doing to serve the kingdom um, through kids ministry. Um, so let's get started. Um, let's start with prayer because um, this is such an important message. We need the Lord to help us. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, um, just first of all, for the gospel, for saving us, for rescuing us from our sin, and I thank you for these kids ministry leaders um, that are with us, and I pray that you would just um, give them just a greater um, passion for communicating your truth to children, and I pray for me to, um, as I um, communicate <laughs> this um, talk with them through this webinar, I just pray that you would speak through me the words that you want spoken, and that it would be for your glory and honor, and that... Um, um, you know, just through our time together that we would see um, us just better communicate your truth to children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So first of all, if we're going to talk about sharing the gospel message with kids, you know, we need to talk about what is the gospel. Um, so I'm an editor for the Gospel Project for Kids, and one of the elements of our curric curriculum is something we call um, big picture questions and answers. And so we... Um, use these as a um, way to teach kids basic, you know, doctrine of Christianity um, in a question to answer format that's easy to learn. So I look to see what is our question for what is the gospel? And we say the gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. Um, and we know, um, on that note, we know that the word gospel literally means good news, and the gospel is good news. It's that good news about God sending Jesus, and so, um, but if we really want to know what the gospel is, we have to go to the Bible to tell us, because that's where we find it. Um, so, I want to take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, um, and it says in verse 3 and following, For I passed on to you as most important what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. So we see that the gospel is an event that took place at a specific moment in history, um, that being the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus um, for the redemption of sinners. And Paul said this is most important. Um, so at its core, this is what we need to know if we're going to communicate the gospel to anyone, kids or adults, is about Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. So first of all, the gospel is an event, but the gospel is also a story. When we look at the whole of the Bible, we see that the gospel is the story of redemption that God planned since before the foundation of the world. And we see that this story runs through all of scripture. Um, in Luke 24, two of Jesus's disciples were walking down that road to Emmaus. Jesus had just been crucified a few days earlier, and they had heard that morning that some people had seen Jesus alive. And so they're walking along, and all of a sudden Jesus joins them, and they don't recognize him. And so they're telling him about the events of the last couple days. And Jesus says to them in verse 26 and 5, following. He says, wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. So Jesus is showing them that the Old Testament points to his coming, his death and his resurrection. Um, so we know that Jesus, you know, not only told of 
that of that, but he told of his return, that he's coming back again. Um, so Jesus came not only to redeem people, but also to redeem all of creation. Um, so the gospel is the event, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And it's also the story, the story of God sending his son to redeem and restore the world he created from the curse of sin and death. And these two truths together are what the Bible teaches about the gospel. Um, and it's good news because it helps us see the scope of our redemption. It helps us see the deep love that God has for us. And for those of us who have trusted in Jesus to forgive us from our sins, it um, empowers us to live a life of devotion and mission. So that is the gospel. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, talking. Well, not a little bit. We're going to talk about communicating that gospel message to kids. So I want to give you 11 tips um, and then end with a word of encouragement. So the first tip would be just that kids would hear the gospel over and over again. Um, so a lot of times when we um, talk about sharing the gospel, we'll think about big events like maybe a VBS, Vacation Bible School, or like a fall festival or Easter Sunday when we really want to do this really cool gospel presentation. And that is wonderful, absolutely wonderful and necessary um, because there may be people there at that event, children there who that's the first time and only time they're going to hear the gospel message. So we definitely want to steward that time well and talk about what's most important. But for those kids who are in your ministry just week in, week out, um, if we only share the gospel at those big events, um, you know, they're not going to see that the gospel is, um, you know, something that we never get away from. Um, I want to share a quote from Pastor Tim Keller that has been so helpful to me in understanding this. And it says, we never get beyond the gospel in our Christian life to something more advanced. The gospel is not the first step in a stairway of truths. Rather, it's more like the hub in a wheel of truth. The gospel is not just the ABCs, but the A to Z of Christianity. The gospel is not just the minimum required doctrine necessary to enter the kingdom, but the way we make progress in the kingdom. So all of our teaching week in and week out should point kids to Christ's work on the cross um, because the gospel story is weaved throughout the whole entire Bible. Um, so the gospel should be weaved throughout our entire ministry. So no matter what part of the Bible we're studying, Old Testament or New Testament, we want to show how it points to Jesus. Um, so even like when you're in like the Old Testament and you're here teaching a Bible story on the kings, you know, you can talk about how, you know, there were good kings and there were bad kings, but none of the kings were perfect. But, but Jesus is a perfect king who gave his, who lived a perfect life to rescue his people from sin. Um, and he's coming again someday to be king over everything. Or um, if you're studying some of the prophets and you're talking about how they gave God's messages to the people, um, you can talk about how Jesus is the ultimate prophet who not just gave God's messages to the people, but he came to the people as God in the flesh. And he is the final prophet. And we um, now we hear through um, from God through Jesus um, that we taught here in Hebrews. So, um, you know, the gospel project curriculum that I work on, that's kind of our thing that we really focus on is making sure every story points to Jesus. Um, but I want to just encourage you, no matter what curriculum you use, um, anytime you are teaching the Bible to kids, you just want to naturally include the gospel as part of that because it's naturally there. You know, that's the gospel story is weaved throughout the whole Bible. So we want to be faithful to do that so that when um, the Lord is drawing a child to himself, you know, they're already going to know the gospel and be ready to respond in faith. Um, so, okay, so that was the first point. Number two is to involve parents. So we know that the Bible teaches that parents are children's primary spiritual leader. So anytime we have an opportunity to involve parents in the process, we want to do that. Um, there's so many ways that you can do that, whether that's just talking to a parent about how to share the gospel with their child. Um, they may A parent may come to you with questions, and you can answer those. A great thing that I've seen done is to offer um, an, a, a class on um, evangelizing children that's geared toward parents to help them learn 
learn how to talk to their kids about the gospel. And there's so many great resources out there um, for that. So I think that would be a great way to involve parents. Um, and two, just when you see the Lord at work in a child's life, just letting the parent know that and um, we'll encourage them to talk about that with their child. Um, and then it's something that I like to do is um, – Rather than when I'm talking to a child about becoming a Christian, you know, rather than me being the one to lead them um, in praying a prayer to receive Christ is to involve the parent in that and let the parent, you know, pray with that child. You know, sometimes too, if a parent is uncomfortable, still just include them in the room um, as the child prays. Um, just anytime we can involve parents, we want to. Now, of course, we have to include the caveat that a lot of times you'll have kids in your ministry whose parents aren't believers or who aren't involved um, in church or interested in spiritual things. And so we want to do everything we can to support that child, you know, number one, through prayer, um, and then two, um, putting as many godly people in their lives as we can through um, maybe other kids' ministry leaders um, and just doing whatever we can to support that child's faith. Um, and then two, something that's really amazing that I've seen the Lord do do is um, sometimes when the Lord's at work in the life of a child, he'll be at work in the life of that parent too. And he'll use um, what he's doing in the in the child's life to draw the parent himself. So the Lord may give you an opportunity to share the gospel with a parent, you know, through their child. So, you know, just being sensitive to the spirit and how um, the Lord is at work there. So I want to encourage you in that. Um, number three is to talk with a child one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so in large settings like VBS, or a fall festival, you know, we may be tempted to ask kids to, you know, raise their hands or to make a, um, to repeat after us as we say a prayer. And absolutely the Lord can use that, but I would just really caution against it. Um, when you look at how God deals with people in the Bible, I mean, absolutely he deals with his people as a whole. Um, but two, especially in the life of Jesus, you see him um, dealing with individuals differently, you know, because he knows each one is unique and he's doing something unique in each one of their lives. And so, you know, he's doing that with our kids too. And the decision to follow Christ and um, trust in Jesus is the biggest decision anyone will ever make. And so it warrants our full attention. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're giving, you know, adequate time and attention to talking with the child about becoming a Christian and sharing the gospel. Um, so, and two, when you're talking with a child one-on-one, -on -one, it really gives you an opportunity to see what's going on in that child's heart, like to discern. Um, so you can see if that child is really under conviction of sin, if they understood, understand what Jesus did to pay for their sin um, and dying on the cross, if, or if they maybe just are feeling pressured to make a decision or I remember when I was a kid, I went forward just because everybody else was going forward at a VBS and I didn't know what was going on, but thank goodness my parents had the discernment to say, I, I don't think that she's, you know, ready quite yet. So um, just ha having that one-on-one -on -one time will really um, give you a chance to discern what's actually happening. Number four is to use tools. So really the only tool that you need to share the gospel with kids is a Bible, but it's really helpful to have um, just something to guide you. Look for um, tools that use kid-friendly language um, for ones that point you to Bible verses that you can read with the child. Um, and two, make sure that it's one that centers on the gospel. And um, what I mean by that is it puts emphasis on God and what he's done through Jesus versus what we need to do. And um, I think that's something that um, is easy to mm, kind of get off on a little bit in kids ministry. A lot of times we'll want to focus on um, you need to admit you're a sinner and believe in Jesus and follow him. And notice how all the emphasis is on you and what you need to do. But remember, the gospel is the story of Jesus and what he's done on the cross to redeem people and um, creation. And so anytime we're talking with kids about the gospel, we've got to talk about Jesus's work on the cross. And so we want to make sure that we're careful to do that. Um, so definitely as you choose resources or even just as you, you know, or talk on your own, just using the Bible, you know, keep it centered on Jesus. 
Okay, number four, or I'm sorry, number five, we want to avoid using figurative and symbolic language. Remember that children are concrete thinkers, and so, you know, when they hear us use some of our, um, you know, churchy words or symbolic languages, they're hearing it literally. So, if you talk about asking Jesus into your heart, you know, a child may think, oh my goodness, is that going to hurt? <laughs> um, am I going to have to have open heart surgery for him to get in there? Or, um, like knock if Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, you know, they may think of a literal door and like, huh, is that what that pounding is? Um, so we want to be careful um, too. Another thing I've heard used is make Jesus Lord of your life. And, you know, for us as adults, you know, that makes sense to us, but to a kid, what is, what does that mean? Um, so we want to try to use um, language that's simple and concrete for them to understand. So suggestions that I would have is to say, you know, trust in Jesus um, instead of like ask Jesus into your heart, or um, instead of saying, making Jesus Lord of your life, you could say, trust Jesus to be the boss of your life. Um, and instead of like, um, you know, Jesus is working on your heart, you can say Jesus is, you know, working in your life. He's teaching you more about him. Um, so just be careful in how you communicate to make sure that you're speaking in a way a child can understand. Number six is to listen more than talk. This can be really hard for us adults, especially ones who don't like that awkward silence. So just want to encourage you to embrace the awkward silence. Um, as you're talking with a child, you want to be sure to keep it conversational. Um, you don't want to make them, you know, when a child, I know that for me, when I'm uncomfortable, I have trouble formulating what I'm really thinking about. And I'm sure the same goes for children. So we want to um, keep it conversational. So so we can, you know, let them kind of lead the conversation and see what's happening in their heart. Um, so you want to be sure to ask open-ended questions, um, because if you ask a yes, no question, you're going to get yes or no as an answer. <laughs> um, and that's not going to give you much to go on. Um, so I would just encourage you to ex ask a child to express their own ideas. Um, be sure to give time, that time, that awkward silence <laughs> to reflect, give time, time for the child to reflect um, and answer without you giving them the answer. Um, and so if, if there's that really, really long pause, it's just too much, you know, maybe consider rephrasing your question um, to make it a little bit more uh, understandable for the child. Until you want to avoid giving more information than a child asks or needs. I think a lot of times as adults, a child will ask a simple question and we'll go on into like a theological discourse. And it's really not necessary. Um, just simple answers are good um, and keeping that conversation going. So number seven is to look for evidence of conviction. So unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are living lives that are very far from the Lord, but they think that their eternity is secure because they prayed a prayer as a child. And so we want to be, um, we want to carefully steward the hearts that the Lord, these little hearts the Lord has entrusted to us and put under our care. And so um, we want to look for signs of conviction of sin. Um, so questions like, does the child understand that he's a sinner? Um, I found that sometimes talking to kids, you know, a child is very quick to tell me about how their brother or sister sins, but not them themselves. And so we want to just gently redirect them at those times and, um, you know, just discern what's happening. Um, you can also ask a child, you know, is there, is there a sin that you struggle with? Again, you want to reassure them that they're not going to get in trouble for sharing, you know, that that's a safe space. And, and two, just that we're all sinners and we all, you know, struggle with sin. Um, but that's a good way to tell if a child is really under conviction um, or, you know, if they're just curious. Um, another thing is I like to ask a child, you know, how would you tell someone else how to become a Christian? Uh, and if you hear them giving like answers that have to do with like good works, like, you know, reading the Bible, praying, going to church, um, getting baptized, being good, um, you know, we want to emphasize to them that, you know, those are good things, but that's not how you become a Christian. Um, emphasize that what makes a person a Christian is by turning away from their sin and trusting in Jesus and what he did in his perfect life. Um, you know, we don't want them to grow up with that, you know, works mentality and, and thinking they can earn their salvation when we know we absolutely can't earn it. Um, something my pastor likes to say is that the only thing we contribute to our salvation is the sin that made it necessary. So we don't want to um, discount that in the lives of the kids that the Lord's entrusted us.
Number eight is to allow a child to pray in their own words. Um, I think a lot of times we want to just pray a prayer for them, but I think it's wonderful if the child, um, you know, is talking to God on their own. I mean, we want to encourage them to pray out loud if they're comfortable. If they're not, that's okay. Invite them to pray there silently um, if they're uncomfortable. You know, the Lord knows what's going on in that child's heart. He knows what he's up to. And, you know, the even as you hear a child and maybe they say something a little off, you know, they may not get all the language just right yet. I mean, we don't get the language just right all the time, Um, but we can trust that the spirit is interceding for them. If God is truly at work in their lives and working in their hearts. Number nine is to never pressure a child. Um, So we know a lot of adults who have really dramatic conversion stories, but most of the time when a child comes to Christ, it's more of a process. Um, So we don't want to mistake curiosity for conviction. Um, It may take years of asking questions and putting the pieces together before God definitively calls a child to a point of decision. We want to be patient and remember that it's God that saves people and not us. And remember, too, that by nature, most children want to please. And so we want to make sure that we're not inadvertently pressing them to pray a prayer because we want them to come to know the Lord so badly. We want to be patient and let the Lord do the work, his work in his timing and in his power. Number 10 is to never discourage a child. Um, So you may talk to a child and you may discern that he's not yet placed his trust in Jesus. He's not quite ready, but you still want to affirm that child and share in their excitement that God is at work in their lives and just encourage them to keep asking questions and learning more and more and just keep that line of um, conversation open, Um, you know, because it it may take time, but we want to encourage them that it's going to happen and we don't have to be in a hurry. Speaking of not being in a hurry, number 11 is do not rush baptism. Um, We want to take time to um, observe evidence that a child has truly turned from sin and trusted in Jesus before we encourage him to be baptized. And um, you can look questions to ask would be, you know, does the child have a new affection for Jesus? I know that when I became a Christian as, as a middle schooler, I had this insatiable desire to read the Bible. Um, and then to another question to ask, is he quick to repent when he sins? Um, does she have a desire for spiritual practices like prayer and Bible reading? Um, does he show an increased love for others? Um, and again, you know, we, it takes time. It's, it takes time after um, you're saved. You know, the Lord works on us. Um, but we do want to see if the Spirit of God is in that child, you know, you're going to see some change. And so we want to um, take time to observe that. And so moving slow toward baptism doesn't mean that a child hasn't been converted. The slowness just allows parents and others to see the Spirit's work in that child. And so one of the reasons I think it's wise to not rush baptism and to have some space between when that child prayed to receive Christ versus when they're baptized is because with children being concrete thinkers, they may mistakenly identify this concrete act of baptism um, as as their salvation experience. When really it's that moment they turned from sin and trusted in Christ Um, that they were saved and became part of God's kingdom. And so having a little bit of space helps them discern, um, you know, distinguish between, you know, those two things. Okay, so finally, um, a word of encouragement. So I, I know this is a lot, and it may be a little overwhelming, but I just want to encourage you to remember that this is God's work and not ours. Um, he involves us in the process, but ultimately he is the one who brings about the fruit. And so the only human who ever perfectly, (coughs) excuse me, the only human who ever perfectly communicated the gospel to anyone, um, adult or child, is Jesus. And he is God and man. (laughs) Um, So there have been plenty of people who have been saved through um, poor presentations of the gospel because the power is not in the person giving the message. The power is in the message, in the message of Jesus. Um, So we're not going to get it perfect, but God has given us his spirit to help us. And so we can ask the spirit to help us discern what's happening in the heart of a child and to see how he's at work in that child's life. So, and I'll say too, another word of encouragement, just the more you talk to kids about the gospel, (coughs) excuse me, 
and the more confident you're going to become in doing it. And not so much because, you know, you've arrived or figured it all figured it all out, but you're just going to learn how to hear, um, recognize what the Lord is doing. And, um, you know, the words that kids are saying is, is little clues. Um, so I just want to encourage you that this is all the Lord asks of us is faithfulness and you're being faithful here. Um, you know, wanting to get trained and to do this well, and he's going to honor that. And we don't have to have it perfect. We just need to be dependent on him. Um, so thank you so much for um, joining me for this webinar on sharing the gospel message with kids. And I pray that you will see many children come to know the Lord through your ministry. Many blessings to you.